Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel. If you are new to me, my name is Lauren and on this channel I talk about healing chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue by healing old emotional wounds. Old emotional wounds from our past, from our early life, particularly from our childhood. More specifically, I really am referring to more attachment trauma because this is what I have and this is how I have healed my chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. And I am still working to heal some other like chronic symptoms that I have. So I'm still on this journey, I'm still on this process, but I have healed my fatigue in so many ways and I have more vitality than ever. And so I'm sharing with you the process that I'm using to do it, how to translate your symptoms into emotions that you can actually find and heal. Find, feel, and heal so that we can heal the symptom and heal the fatigue, heal the illness itself. Today I'm talking about the root chakra because I have been seeped in root chakra healing for the last, I don't know, months, many months, but that is really what I'm working on right now. And I really believe that it is at the root of this illness. I spent so much time in the sacral chakra and it is so important. The sacral chakra is so important. There are so many inner child wounds in this, the sacral chakra. Trauma is stored in the root chakra and the sacral chakra. So I believe you really need to heal the wounds in both chakras to heal this illness. I spent so much of the time and actually most of the illness healing time was spent looking at the sacral chakra because sacral chakra, that's where your hormones are. You know, your ovaries, that's where your hormonal regulation is and your water retention, your lymph, because the sacral chakra controls your water system. But I'm talking about the root chakra because that's the basis of everything, everything, all of your chakras and your whole body system. I believe any time you have a chronic illness, the majority of time there is some emotional and energetic aspect to that illness. It might not be the root cause, but I really believe that anytime there's a chronic illness, you need to look at this stuff because it's probably contributing some way and it might be the root cause as it was for me and my chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. The root chakra is where our foundational health is and that's why I think the root chakra is especially important when you're talking about a chronic illness because your health is in your root chakra. And I think so often the energetic causes of illnesses and energetic contributions to illnesses is in some way, shape or form related to our ability to feel safe in our bodies and feeling safe in the world, feeling safe in our environment. But really the environment that's with us all the time is our bodies. So really being able to feel safe in our body. And it's so funny because I think so many of us think that we do feel safe I did. I did. I never resonated with this idea. You know, I would look at root chakra information and they would be talking about safety in the world. And I just could never relate. I thought, well, then I can't have that many root chakra issues. Be my root chakra, you know, I probably have some stuff, but you know, I feel safe. I feel safe in my everyday life. And that's what's so tricky is because, because these wounds, when they happen in childhood, early childhood, when our foundation is being formed, our personality develops on top of all of those wounds. And so we can't differentiate in our existence, the way we feel in the world, the way we experience the world that's created in those years. And so we spend our whole lives only knowing one way to feel in the world. And so from our perspective, we might feel like we feel safe, think that we feel safe but actually in our unconscious, we don't. There's an if or when statement. So I feel safe if, I feel safe when. And so when we have all those circumstances, good, like our relationships are good, our money's okay, our house is okay, all those things, then we feel safe, right? But if your root chakra is really solid with no wounds, no distortions in it, you feel safe no matter where you are and what the external circumstances are in our lives. Well, in reality, how many of us feel that way? Not many. Pretty much all of us are rocked when we've got money trouble, when we've got house trouble, when we've got relationship trouble, and not just rocked in like, oh, this is a difficult time. It's like at our core and we've, we develop anxiety and fears and, you know, catastrophic thinking because a trauma is being triggered and we don't realize it. A wound, a core wound in our root chakra is being triggered and we don't realize it. 
Today I wanted to talk about sort of the healing process of root chakra wounds. When they start to come up, what I'm ending up doing is spending a lot of time sitting in the conscious attention of it. And what I mean by that is sitting as the observer of this. I'm noticing in the last few months, not a ton of emotion has come up. And if you're like me, this is true for you, that it's very difficult to access the actual emotion and have emotional releases. I find it very difficult. I am a chronic dissociator. <laughs> And I believe this is what causes chronic symptoms, is the unconscious switch of not feeling an emotion. We, we learned in childhood to not feel an emotion. It was too big. It was too powerful. There's nothing we can do to change it. And so our nervous system goes into this freeze state in response to an emotional trigger, a particular wound coming up. And so what happens is our nervous system goes into this freeze state. And when it goes into the freeze state, we can't feel. We numb. We can't feel that emotion and it was protective but the problem is over time that creates energetic distortions in our chakras which creates biological and chemical imbalances in our bodies physiological imbalances in our bodies and that creates chronic symptoms which turn into chronic syndromes and illnesses like chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue so that pattern as you're healing doesn't just go away we have to retrain it and create this very safe space for our bodies and our minds that it's safe, that we are safe. And by that, usually what that means, what I have found that means is that it's loved, that you are loved no matter what by me, by you. So we love ourselves to cultivate that love of unconditional, that unconditional love, that it doesn't matter what we're feeling. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives, in our bodies. I love you and I accept you and I bring you in. I accept you cultivating that energy of accepting ourselves. That means releasing judgment. That means releasing disgust, disdain of certain aspects of ourselves, casting off of ourselves. This, it sounds so simple. You can say it in one sentence. Unconditionally love yourself. This is a long process in my experience to retrain ourselves, to show our inner child that we actually mean it, that we can't just say it. We can't just give lip service to it. We have to actually show it. And that takes time. It takes time for our inner child to learn to trust us because a lot of us unknowingly, unconsciously were sort of betraying our inner child on a regular basis by berating her, by saying this part of you is not okay. That part of you is not okay. This part of you is not okay. It's like severing off these parts of ourselves. And this is what causes chronic symptoms and illness. I so believe this. So what's interesting is when you have tendencies like mine to dissociate, to depersonalize, to not be able to feel an emotion that's coming up, when we're in this healing process, we've made this safe space, the emotions are starting to come up, you're still dissociating. And so the emotions are really difficult to actually feel, but that's how we heal them. So it's like, okay, well then how do we heal them? So part of making that safe space for me and my process, and I hope this is helpful for you, is to do a lot of sitting and observing the energy of whatever it is. So what I mean by that is not literally sitting in a chair, looking at something, <laughs> looking internally. What I mean by that is a daily awareness of the fact that first there's root chakra pain coming up and having this open, curious mentality and mindset of what is it? What is the pain? Where is the pain? What is the wound? What is the pain? And just having, just keeping that open dialogue with yourself. And what I'm finding is it's been weeks, months, and I've had pretty much two, two big realizations of what that is. So that shows you how long that the process can take. It takes some patience and maybe I just have, you know, more, <laughs> more extreme defenses. I don't know. Everybody's going to be different, but to access my emotions, it takes a long time. And so what I've been dealing with, with the most recently is a lot of sadness, a lot of sadness. I've been waking up in the morning, sad, really sad, wanting to cry, but unable to. Why am I sad? People ask me, why are you sad? Why are you sad? I don't know. 
I don't know why I'm sad, but I'm sad. That's one part of it. My self-acceptance, and this is important, self-acceptance, it doesn't matter if other people accept it. <laughs> other people want to know the reason. I want to know the reason too, but for now, I'm just accepting the fact that I feel sad. And it's okay for me to feel sad. It's okay, you inner child, for you to feel sad in my body. It's okay. It's okay for you to feel sad. Actually, this is Kyle Cease. If you follow him, I love him. And he's got this phrase, you're allowed to be blank in my body, whatever the feeling is or experience. And so oh, I've been using this a lot. You're allowed to feel sad in my body. You are allowed to feel sad. You're allowed to feel sad. I love you. You're allowed to feel sad. Now, for some people, it seems that that can bring up a lot of emotion for people. I'm a tough, I'm a tough cookie. <laughs> that does not bring up emotion for me. I'm laying out this space. I'm just making this space and it's taking a long time. I'm laying out this space of you're allowed to be sad. I don't know why you're sad. I don't need to know why you're sad. You are allowed to be sad as long as you need to be sad. And I'm here for you. I will love you. And you know what? I'm finding it difficult. That's what I want to do. That's my intention. But it's really difficult. Because when you've got a really unpleasant emotion coming up, you feel sad. You're just like, I don't want to feel sad. I want to get out of this emotion. I want to get out. I want to do something. I want to get, I want to get rid of it. I want to, I want to, I want to be happy again. I want to do something to, to change my state. What, what can I do to shift me out? But when you're trying to convert your symptoms back into the original emotion, you're trying to release that original emotion. It takes a lot of retraining. And so it's this retraining of, I'm going to sit in this emotion. And even if I'm not feeling it, I'm experiencing it. Even if I'm not vibrating at the frequency of the emotion, which is how you actually release it to heal it, I'm experiencing it and I'm accepting it. At least doing the best I can. <laughs> I am so not perfect at this. Especially with emotions that I don't know what it is. I just feel bad. I just feel like crap. I just feel icky and sticky and like mangly in there. Like, and this is what, this is the thing about old emotions. And I don't know if you find this as well. But the way I always feel about these old stagnant emotions that have been stuck, these unprocessed emotions that have been stuck in our bodies for years, years and decades is it's not, doesn't feel like a regular emotion feels when you feel it. Something happens in your life and you feel angry or sad. They're painful when they happen in the moment, but they're clean. They, they happen and you can deal with them. This is my experience. But when these, these old emotions, I keep making this face because they feel yucky and stringy and like you're, you're trying to pull out this emotion that's dark and Sticky. It's probably really weird that I think of it that way, but that's how it feels to me. It feels damp and stuck and stagnant. And so when these old emotions are starting to surface, it feels icky. I've used this word a bunch of times on my channel because that's how it feels to me. It feels so uncomfortable. I just like want to get out of my own skin. So I find this process really hard. And I don't know if you find this too. These old emotions I find really difficult because they're emotions that my unconscious, my inner child learned from very early age to not feel. And so it tries to shut it off and not feel it and dismiss it and get it away. So this practice of trying to sit and just observe the emotion. In my experience, just observing the emotion without feeling it does not heal it. It's a stepping stone in the process of healing it. Now you want to also observe your emotion when you're having the emotion, when you're actually feeling it and you're vibrating, you're crying, you're releasing emotion and you're actually feeling it vibrating at the frequency of that emotion and you know how you vibrate when you cry. In my experience, you vibrate at different frequencies with different emotions, whether you're crying for sadness or vulnerability or shame or whatever it is, or pain, they feel different to me. The, the, the vibration feels different to me. I don't know about you. But so while you're vibrating at that frequency of the emotion, releasing the emotion, you're also in your mind observing yourself as the adult while your inner child is having this emotion kind of, or a part of you is separate and 
loving that part of you that is really hurting and not identifying completely with it because that can get you into trouble. That emotion might not heal. You have to have play the observer too. So there are a couple instances in which you have to play the observer, but the observer I'm using is sort of like a stepping stone to that point because I can't just get there. I can't just get to the emotion. I can't release an emotion like that. So many people can. So many people, once, <laughs> once they just allow themselves to feel, gives themselves permission to feel, they just feel it. It just doesn't happen to, it's not that easy. I'm having to sit for like weeks observing and creating loving space as best as I can for whatever that is. So whether it's that I'm not good enough or there's not enough for me or grief over the loss, grief over the person who I have suppressed, who I unconsciously suppressed my whole life as a defense. And I think that's where the sadness is coming from in this instance. But no matter what it is, it's just I'm making that space. Let me know in the comments if, you, if you're working on this, if you're doing this, and how, how easily you can access your emotions. These emotions that come up and these root chakra ones are the deepest. They're the first ones. They're the ones that laid the groundwork for all the other energetic distortions that happen in our bodies to create an illness. So the root chakra ones are the deepest. They're the most core to our survival and our being and our experience in this world and the life. So these wounds about not being good enough, about not having enough are really deep. They're really deep. And the amount of tears that I've been able to get out of those two, really minimal. I know there's tons more. I, I know there's more. But this is another thing I'm really working on, I think is really important, and I encourage you to because I know it's really important, is this ability to trust as best we can that the universe and our soul is going to bring the actual emotion up when it's ready, and only when it's ready, and not a second before. <laughs> and so creating that loving space and that accepting space is what I think is the thing to do to encourage that so that when it does come, when our soul does decide we're ready to see that, we're ready to feel that, we're ready to heal that, it will. And you know, when astrological shifts happen and astrological changes interact with your natal chart to bring up a wound, one of these times, the actual emotion is going to be able to be felt. But we have to cultivate that loving, accepting energy first because it's not about words. You can say, I love you and I accept you until the cows come home and it's not going to work. It's the energy you bring. Simple as that. And that takes practice and work and healing. So the healing itself helps you cultivate, it helps you create a, a true love for yourself and acceptance of yourself and pride in yourself. Like I've never felt so confident and loving towards myself as I have since starting to heal these wounds. And this is what I want for you too. Healing this illness, it's not easy, but it's doable. So I just wanted to share this idea of this playing observer and this loving, accepting space could take weeks, could take months. I have been sitting in this, I'm not good enough, just conscious attention to this, I'm not good enough, just being aware and then being able to see all the ways that it has pervaded my life. It's pretty much all, every aspect that there is. And every other wound is linked to this one, is not being good enough. And that's linked to not feeling safe in some way. So I've been sitting in this for months, not sitting in it, but watching it, being observer of it, having conscious attention on it. My conscious attention was not on it before. And that is the first big step of bringing conscious attention to a wound that we have. So I hope that was helpful. It's what I'm working on right now. So I wanted to share it with you. I hope it was helpful. I hope you all are doing really well in the world today and doing really well on the healing journey that you are on. I would love to hear about your experience in the comments. Please make a comment below if you feel like it. If you like this video, push that like button and share the video online. If you know anybody else struggling with chronic fatigue or adrenal fatigue, you think this might be relevant for. And um, I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day. And I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.